So this couple comes in together to buy an engagement ring and they had a budget of about $20,000, which is a lot for an engagement ring. But the ring that she happened to pick out was about $35,000, which is a lot of money. And she was really adamant about picking it and he was kind of reserved, like, you know, it is a lot of money. But she's like, no, if you love me, you'll buy it, yada, yada, yada. And he's like, you know what, you're going to be my wife, the mother of my kids, whatever makes you happy. So after they finally decide, I pack it up for them. I'm like, here you go. Have a great marriage. Have a great life. Goodbye. About three weeks later, the fiance comes in and I'm thinking she just wants to get the ring size or something. And she's like, can you guys take out the diamond and replace it with a cubic zirconium? Cubic zirconium is a very cheap substitute for a diamond. So I was like, uh, yeah, we can do that, but just give us two or three days. So she leaves and I call her fiance because I was like, oh, this is really suspicious. And he had no idea that she came into the shop or that she was coming in. So he calls me two days later and he finds out that she was going to break up with him. She would have kept that diamond and she would have given him the fake one. He would have returned it and he would have gotten no money back. Talk about crazy ass story time 23 years ago there was this mother of two children who just recently had a third child soon after the newborn baby was sleeping in the nursery while they were throwing a house party and unfortunately during the party the house caught on fire everyone scrambles out of the house and they couldn't get to the baby and then the cops concluded that the baby had died in the fire but her other two kids made it out alive and even though the cops told her that her baby had died she refused to believe it many years later the mother took her two children to a birthday party and there was this other woman there with her child and now the mother looks at that child and is in shock because she looks so much like her other two kids so she goes up to the little girl and says that she has bubble gum in her hair so that she can steal a few strands of her hair she took it to a lab and they dna tested it and that little girl was her child so it turns out many years ago during that house party a woman that the mother knew went upstairs took the baby and started the fire so that the baby would be declared as dead and she could easily get away with kidnapping her um and then she ran from the cops and they can't find her. there is a creepy lost episode of Barney that a father swears he caught his kids watching. One day he was looking at the TV guide when he saw that it said a lost episode of Barney was going to air at 7 p.m. He asked his kids if they wanted to watch and they said yes. They all sat down to watch it and the theme song started playing but something wasn't right about it. It almost sounded like the song was being whispered. The episode started as it usually did, the kids holding the Barney doll that suddenly comes to life. But when Barney started talking he sounded slightly weird. It sounded like two people were talking at once. His normal voice and one that sounded darker and scarier and suddenly he said hi kids today I'm gonna talk to you about death. So one of the kids asked him Barney, what's death? He then chuckled and said this is with his face suddenly turning angry his teeth growing long and then he eats the child And then he proceeds to chase all the other children around trying to eat them throughout the rest of the episode And then at the very end of the episode he sang the I love you song as if nothing happened so this is why you should always lock your doors. A junior in high school was home alone working on a paper while his parents were out to dinner. All night, he sits with his back to his door, sitting at his desk with his noise-canceling headphones on. Around 11 o'clock, he takes his headphones off at the same time his parents are returning to the house, and he hears his mom from downstairs yell, Hey, Adrian, what happened? Confused, he runs downstairs and sees right away what she's looking at. Muddy footprints all over the rug. He tells her, I didn't leave my desk. And then they realize someone must have broken in. They look at the footprints and there's none leaving the house. They're worried someone's still in the house. So they run into the garage, terrified, call the police. Police arrive and they don't find anyone in the house, but they do make a chilling discovery upstairs. The police bring them to the kid's bedroom door, which had been left open all night, and they point to the message written on it in Sharpie. This is the actual transcript of what was written on his door, which means for nearly two hours, someone stood in this kid's doorway watching him. I'm going to tell you guys about the time that my entire class teamed up to take my teacher down. And by down, I mean fired, which is terrible, but... And to be clear, I wasn't involved in the incident. I was just asked in to be a witness along with the rest of the class. If you're not interested at this point, like, I don't even know. So when I was in sixth grade, I had this teacher called Mr. W. We're going to call him Mr. W. He was our science teacher. And he was fine. He wasn't, like, amazing or bad. He was just okay. He did smell, like, really, really bad. But again, that didn't affect his teaching at all. One day, however, I don't even know how this happened. He asked us all to get started on our work. He was a little irritated that day. I don't even remember why. One of the girls in our class, her name was Summer. She didn't have her workbook. Mr. W asked her where her work was. I didn't bring it today. They started arguing. The rest of the class was kind of silent, just watching this. She's a nice girl. She wasn't attacking him or anything. He did, however, get very angry. So angry, in fact, that he grabbed his binder and threw it across the room over her head. It just barely skipped her head and slammed on the floor. This wasn't like an empty binder from the dollar store. It was a teacher binder full of work. We were all silent. Summer stopped talking. Look for part two to find out what happened. This is probably one of my most requested videos. How to turn this into this.
I use this face paint palette from Amazon. How it works, here's my very loved palette. There's three primary colours, yellow, blue and red mixed together to make brown. It is the same as mixing paint. To make it lighter, you add white. To make it darker, you add black. I'm going to start off with red and just pop a little bit all over my face. Next, I add yellow. This will make it turn orange, which you can kind of see with my dirty brush anyway. I don't want to look like an oompa limpa, so I'm going to add blue to neutralise. If I blend this in as it is, it will be way too dark for me, so I'm going to add white to lighten it. Now for the fun part, we blend. Now this is kind of trial and error. As you can see, this side's too dark, so I'm going to add more white. Keep adding colours and blending until it matches. It's a lot easier to work in sections. And after about five minutes, I feel like I've got a decent match. It's definitely not an everyday thing and more just a fun thing to watch and do. But yeah, that's how you do it. Am I the asshole for telling another gym member to wear a bra? I, 25 female, hate wearing bras. They're uncomfortable, constricting, and expensive. With working from home, I spent the last year and a half basically never wearing a bra and got used to it. Quite frankly, my boobs are non-existent anyway. I recently started going to the gym again and started working out braless. I should note that up until now, no one has ever pointed out anything wrong with me not wearing a bra. However, I was mid-squat and a guy comes up to me, taps me on the shoulder to get my attention and tells me that my nipples are poking through my shirt. I get really irritated because why the F is this guy staring at my nipples in the first place and then stopping me mid-set to inform me? I get really annoyed. Am I the asshole for confiscating my daughter's glasses as a punishment? A few weeks ago, my daughter Maddie, 15, and her friend stole a girl's asthma inhaler and destroyed it. The girl ended up becoming ill, but fortunately the school had a spare one. Because the incident was so serious and also because Maddie and her friends had been tormenting the girl for a while, it resulted in Maddie being expelled from school. The other girl's parents almost involved the police but thankfully decided against it. When I got Maddie home from school after what happened, I gave her a long lecture and she didn't regret what happened at all and thought it was just messing around. She thought it was stupid that she got expelled. When she came down for breakfast the next day, I decided on a punishment. I took her glasses off her face and went into her room and confiscated her spare pants. Am I the asshole for kicking my sister out for how she reacted to my pregnancy announcement? Mom passed away four years ago and my sister and I received inheritance. All mom owned was split between us equally except for her house. In her will, she wrote that the house goes to whoever has kids in the future to help the grandchildren. Then mentioned that if me and my sister have kids, we'll split house value in half. It was obvious my sister and her previously child-free husband wanted to keep the house so bad because within weeks of the funeral, she announced she was pregnant but couldn't keep it since she announced miscarriage days later. She didn't stop till she had a son a year later. She kept getting involved in my marriage, advising me to reconsider because of my husband's condition that had us suffer from infertility. He was also in remission for a mental condition. Story time about how he cheated on his baby mama with me. So a little background information. There was this boy and we're going to call him John. John and I knew each other through one of our mutual friends. While 24-7, John would post sad quotes on his Snapchat story. Because him and his girlfriend had just broken up. So I decided that I was going to be Captain Save-A-Ho and be there for him telling him it was okay. <laughs>